We are now in study session 8 with the title Textual Analysis of a Short Story, Matter and Manner in Chinua Achebe's The Madman. Introduction In study session 3, we discussed the features of short story as a subgenre of prose fiction. In this study session, we will exemplify the basic tenets of short story with Chinua Achebe's The Madman. The study session will dwell on the biography of the author, the context of his story, its thematic preoccupations, techniques, and elements. When you have studied this session, you should be able to discuss the thematic preoccupations of Chinua Achebe's literary works. Assess the techniques employed in the story. Sketch the plot structure of the story. Comment on the elements of the story and critique the story from the perspectives of its contents and form. About the author, Chinua Achebe. Chinua Achebe is an Igbo Nigerian novelist and author of Things Fall Apart famous for writing unsentimentally about the effects of Western colonialism on Igbo society. Born on November 16, 1930, in Ogidi, Nigeria, Chinua Achebe is a prominent Igbo novelist acclaimed for his unsentimental depictions of the social and psychological disorientation accompanying the imposition of Western customs and values upon traditional African society. His particular concern was with emergent Africa at its moment of crisis. His novels range in subject matter from the first contact of an African village with a white man to the educated African's attempt to create a firm moral order out of the changing values in a large city. Educated in English at the University of Ibadan, Achebe taught for a short time before joining the staff of the Nigerian Broadcasting Corporation in Lagos, where he served as Director of External Broadcasting during 1961 and 1966. In 1967, he co-founded a publishing company at Enugu with the poet Christopher Okigbo, who died shortly thereafter in the Nigerian Civil War. In 1969, Achebe toured the United States with his fellow writers, Gabriel Okara and Cipriani Quincy, Cipriani Quincy, lecturing at universities. Upon his return to Nigeria, he was appointed research fellow at the University of Nigeria and became professor of English, a position he held from 1976 until 1981, professor emeritus from 1985. He was a director from 1970 of two Nigerian publishing outfits, Heinemann Educational Books Limited and Nwanko Ifejika Limited. After an automobile accident in Nigeria in 1990 that left him partially paralyzed, he moved to the United States where he taught at Bird College in New York. In 2009, Achebe left Bird to join the faculty of Brown University in Providence, R.I. Let us now take a look at the subject matter of the madman. Umwibe, with three other hefty men, whips the madman out of a hut which the madman uses as his resting place when the market women are no longer in the sheds. He also alights from a lorry on another occasion and gives the madman the beating of his life, claiming to be correcting him not to walk in the middle of the highway. He is also claimed to order his children to stone the madman and make remarks about his nakedness. On a particular market day, 
Nguibe rises early to visit his farm beyond the stream to do some work before going to the market for merriment, taking palm wine with his peers. After Nguibe had finished the work, he decided to wash off the sweat of work as usual. As he is taking his bath, the earlier mentioned madman who is on his way to the market comes to the stream to drink some water. The madman, on seeing Nguibe, quickly recognizes him as his oppressor and decides to teach Nguibe the lesson of his life. Nguibe, who is backing the madman, hears laughter and turns quickly. Seeing the madman, he threatens to whip him, but before he could make a movement, the madman takes his clothes and puts it on. He shouts at the madman to drop the clothes, but it is too late. Out of anger, Nguibe starts the madman who was headed towards the highway. Unconscious of his nakedness, he starts running after the madman, shouting and cursing him. Nguibe, who could not meet up with the madman who had become practically lost among the much denser crowds, continues his search towards the market. Nguibe is sighted in his nudity by his kinsmen. They try in vain to stop him from entering the market, believing that a madman that enters the market can never be cured of his madness. Nguibe is caught at the middle of the market and is taken to two different medicine men by his relatives. The first medicine man refuses to take care of him, telling them that Nguibe cannot be cured of his madness because he has entered the market. The second medicine man attempts to treat him with the aim of getting money from them. Unknown to his relatives, Nguibe comes to his senses and they believe that the madman has killed his madness. Two years later, Nguibe makes fresh proposal for joining the community of titled men in his town. However, other men put aside the issue and treat another issue. The Madman is a story that satirizes the folly of some men who, in their comfort and success in life, do not remember to pity and be merciful to the less fortunate people in their societies. It represents also the tale of Umwebe, a man of high standing in Ubu town. It presents also the tale of Umwebe, a man of high standing in Ubu town whose status continues to soar onto the nemesis of his past maltreatment of a madman catches up with him. There is a tragic reversal of status as people take a naked Umwebe running towards the marketplace for a fresh madman. He does not only miss the opportunity of joining the highly respected Ozo title society to which he had applied, but also loses his hitherto high esteem among his family members and the whole community since they all see him as having at least experienced madness. The story is preoccupied with post-independence realities in Nigeria. In the story, Achebe reveals some of the happenings in Nigeria. He uses the story to portray the oppression that was happening at the time the rich chastised, looked down on, and belittled the underprivileged in the society. It is a tragic story which dwells on the problem of man's inhumanity to man in post-independence Nigeria. Let us now take a look at themes. The madman has a theme of retribution. The major theme of the story is retribution. It is revealed through the story that people will reap. It is revealed through the story that people will reap what they sow. Nwibe is a wealthy man of high standing who is even still rising. The madman on the other side has little value in the society. Mad people have no honor in society and people who have experienced madness before are barred from holding certain exalted positions. Mwibe has an encounter 
with the madman and instead of being considerate and kind, he jumps down from his mummy wagon and beats him up. He is generously repaid when the madman meets him naked in the stream. He packs away his clothes and makes him pursue him without having any clothes on. Before Umwebe could appraise the situation, he finds himself in the marketplace with the outlook of a madman. This is a coup de grace as Umwebe descends from exalted status in the society to share the fate of common people such as mad men. Another theme of the story is the side effects of polygamy. The evil of polygamy is brought to light by the happiness in Umwebe's household. Nwibe is a polygamist who has two wives. Mboye, the senior wife, is a woman of peace who rarely demanded the respect due to her from the other. Udenko, the second wife, is unruly and quarrelsome. When Nwibe thinks of changing his wife's thatch roofs, the fear of Udenko setting the compound on fire keeps him from doing Mboye's hurt right away. The home is also full of rancor as the wives often quarrel on minor issues. We now take a look at character and characterization. The major characters in the story include Nwebe, Mboye, the madman, and Udenko. Nwebe, he is the tragic hero of the story. He is wealthy, noble, and of high standing in the society. He seeks admission into the honored hierarchy of Ozo title holders. However, his tragic flaw is his lack of self-control and human feeling, especially for the destitute. He angrily descends on the madman when the latter was not well composed on the road. He allows his lack of self-control to blind him to nakedly chase a madman to the market on a market day when he could have used wisdom to appeal to or appease the madman when he was about to pick his clothes. If persuasion had failed, Mwibe could have patiently stayed in the stream before finding his way home when darkness falls. He was not taken serious whenever he pointed at the real madman as a mad one. As a result, he lost his high esteem in the society and was forever disqualified from becoming an Ozo title holder. Mboye, she is the first wife of Mwebe. She is a woman of peace who is not accorded the respect due to her from the other. Rather, she suffers a series of provoking statements from her co-wife Udenko, who is a woman of trouble and is ready to make trouble with anybody who crosses her path. The madman. Mad people are arguably the least recognized people in some societies. This madman, though unimportant in his society, destroys an important man. The madness reduces Umwebe from a noble man, first to a madman and later to an ex madman. The madman is a comic character used by Achebe to buttress the point that everybody in any society is important and if not well treated could decide the fate of the so-called important people. Let us now take a look at setting. This story is set in a traditional Igbo society. It is a society that is governed by traditional beliefs and practices. The traditional family setup is also depicted in the story. Mwibe is a polygamist married to two wives with the attendant trouble associated with polygamy. The role of the traditional medicine man is brought to light. The traditional belief that a mad person cannot be totally cured destroys Umwebe's chance of ever rising again to honor and acceptability among the also titled men. The physical setting of the story is the town of Ubu, a rural area. We now take a look at narrative devices. The following are some of the devices used for effective narration. 
suspense. Suspense is used as a technique to arouse the interest of the reader and sustain their concentration. This is employed when the madman keeps on watching Mwebe while the latter is naked in the stream. Foreshadowing. Foreshadowing is used judiciously. There is a premonition of madness on page 2 where Mwebe angrily scolds. If Udenko is crazy, must everybody else go crazy with her? This is even extended to Udenko who replies her husband. Udenko is always mad. But those who are sane, certain for special effect. In this story, certain is used for special effect. For instance, Market and River have special effect upon the action and fate of Umwebe, the protagonist of the story. Coincidence. Coincidence is used to develop the plots. Some uncommon occurrences happen by chance. It is a coincidence that the time Umwebe bathes in the stream, the same time the madman is thirsty and goes to the same stream. Umwebe decides to wash off his sweat at the stream, and at the same time the madman is also thirsty and also goes to the same stream to drink water. The two men from Umwebe's village also get to the entrance of the market when Umwebe also gets there in nakedness. Another coincidence is the occurrence of the incident on a market day when many people can easily see and publicize the news about Umwebe's seeming madness. This is used to quicken the downfall of Umwebe and propel the plot. Role Reversal Umwebe, who had earlier been a sensible man, later turns to play the role of a madman and the lunatic becomes a sane man towards the end of the story. This is used by the author for didactic effect. No condition is permanent. African Traditions Archibald's own literary language is standard English blended with pidgin, Igbo vocabulary, proverbs, images and speech patterns. An example of his skills as a storyteller is in this story a richly layered narrative in which the social customs of the Igbo speaking people are strongly present. Umwebe, an honored member of a distant town, Ubu, plans to go to the market where he has once chased the madman out of his hut and sent his children to throw stones at him. As he washes by the river, the madman snatches his clothes. Umwebe runs naked after him shouting to stop the madman. The thief for the clothes disappears into the crowd and Umwebe is taken to a medicine man but he has lost his social position. For how could a man be the same again of whom witnesses from all the lands of Olo and Igbo have once reported that they saw today a fine hefty man in his prime stark naked tearing through the crowds to answer the call of the marketplace. Such a man is marked forever. It is a superstition in Africa that when a madman enters into the market, he becomes incurable. This is confirmed by the two men who try to prevent Mwebe from entering into the market with his madness. The first medicine man also confirms it through his refusal to treat Mwebe. The setting of the story as a traditional Igbo society. A common feature of African traditional society is the prominence of superstitious beliefs. These can be found in the story. For example, a lunatic is considered irrevocably mad the moment he or she steps into the market square. Satire. The story criticizes and mocks certain ills in the society with a view to preferring solutions. Indeed, the story exposes the attitude of most people to those who are regarded as the dregs of the society. Mockery is used to show the foolishness of this attitude through Umwebe's folly and resultant fall from grace to grass. He is regarded by his society as a man of high standards. This makes him harass the madman at any and every opportunity. He is, however, 
punished and ridiculed when a madman catches him naked and packs his clothes. His threats of whipping the madman do not work as the madman flees with Mwebe's clothes. Wise sayings and proverbs. Proverbs and wise sayings are used in the story. Odenpo makes use of a proverb in the last sentence on page 2. The second medicine man also says no one folds his arms because the condition of his child is beyond hope. We have now come to the end of study session 8. In this study session, we exemplify the basic tenets of short story using Chinua Achebe's The Madman as illustration. We dwelt on the biography of the author Chinua Achebe, the context of the story, its thematic preoccupations, techniques and elements. We argued that in The Madman, Achebe dwells on the themes of man's inhumanity to man, vengeance and retribution, and the evil effects of polygamy. We also identified and illustrated some of the formal properties of the story, including suspense, coincidence, role reversal, satire, superstition, proverbs, and foreshadowing.